Hi, I'm Richard Dennis, author of Fumé Restoral. While I work on the sequel to that novel, available sometime by the end of the year, I'd like to share with you another of the forgotten notables of the early 20th century. Wanda Woltz was an avant-garde photographer whose works are exhibited in museums around the world, including the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. Born in the city of Trieste on July 25, 1903, when it was still part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, Wanda lived and worked in the city until her death in 1984. She came from a family of acclaimed photographers. Her grandfather, Giuseppe Wolz, had founded the Studio Fotografico Wolz in 1860. Wanda and her sister trained in photographer from an early age and worked alongside their father in the studio until his death in 1928, after which they took over managing the business. Wanda began her photographic career with portraits, but later moved into avant-garde creations, including photo montages and still life compositions. In the early 1930s, she met Filippo Marinetti, who invited her to join the futurist art movement. The invitation was notable on a couple of accounts. Futurism had for many years been a mostly male enclave, prizing violence along with its art. In published manifestos, it emphasized manly virtues and contempt for women. Moreover, futurism had for many years ignored photography as an art. Several of the early futurists had been quite vocal on that score and it had only been in the late 1920s that the movement fully embraced the artistic worth of photography. In 1932, Wanda was invited to submit her work to the National Exhibition of Photography held in Trieste. For her most famous photo, entitled Cat and I, she superimposed the image of a cat over an image of her face. While superimposition may be commonplace today with the aid of modern technology and software, it was a daring and novel creation at the time. Her photo skillfully exhibits a facial metamorphosis, balancing between human and animal, light and dark, simultaneously revealing and hiding the personality of the woman. Besides her superimposition photographs, she also experimented with chronophotography, capturing her subjects in various phases of movement, as in the photos Wonder Bar and Gymnastic Exercise. In these photos, Wanda captured forms in motion, but unlike other photographers, she recorded some but not all of her subjects' movements, highlighting the most vital points. Always, she kept the focus on the human. By the end of the 1930s, Wanda abandoned futurism and concentrated on portraits and management of the studio, which she kept open until 1980. If you'd like to learn more about Wanda Waltz, I suggest the book Women Artists of Italian Futurism by Mirella Bentivoglio and Franca Zoccoli. Another good source is Futurism and Photography by Giovanni Lista. The latter book is a beautiful collection of photos, including photos I mentioned, accompanied by insightful text. I hope you've enjoyed this brief look at one of the fascinating people who influenced the 20th century through their words and actions. Join me again in a couple of weeks for another of the prominent men and women who deserve to be remembered. And please check out my novel, Fumé Restoral on sale on Amazon and other fine retail sites. Mm -hmm.